Hello everyone, this is 5G new radio tutorial and we already have talked about physical layer exactly about the spectrum, initial acquisition and also physical layer uplink and downlink data. And today our lesson would be about radio interface architecture. We'll take a brief overview of the overall architecture of NR radio access network and the associated core network, followed by descriptions of the radio access network user plane and control plane uh, protocols. So, in parallel to the work on the new radio, radio access technology in 3GPP, the overall system architectures of both the radio access network, or as we'll say RAN, and the core network, uh, as you will see in this uh, presentation, referred as CN, uh, were visited, including the split of the functionality uh, of the two networks. The RAN is responsible for all radio related functionality uh, of the overall network, including, for example, scheduling, the radio resource handling, retransmission protocols, coding, and various multi antenna schemes. Uh, this function will be discussed in detail in the rest of the presentation. The 5G core network, in, re in return, is responsible for the function not related to radio access, but needed for providing a complete network. This includes, for example, authentication, charging functionality, and setup of end-to-end -end connections. Handling this function separately, instead of integrating them into REN, is beneficial as it allows for several radio access technology to be served by the same core network. However, it is also possible to connect the NR radio access network also to the legacy of the LTE core network. And in LTE, core network was known as EPC or Evolved Packet Core. In fact, uh, this is the case when operating NR. In NR, there are two modes, uh, probably you've heard about it, standalone and non-standalone, uh, referred as NSA and SA. And currently, in 2021, the 5G that we have is the non-standalone mode. And in non-standalone mode, LTE and EBC handle functionality like connection setup and paging. In later releases, there will be introduced a standalone operation with NR connecting to the 5G core as well as LTE connected to 5G core. Thus, the LTE and NR radio schemes and their corresponding core networks are very closely related unlike the transition from 3G to 4G, where the 4G LTE radio access technology cannot connect to a 3G core network. The 5G core network uh, builds upon the EPC with three new area of enhancement compared to EPC. First one is a service-based architecture. The second one is support of network slicing. And the last is control plane and user plane split. A service-based architecture is the basis of the 5G core. And here on the picture, you exactly can see the service-based architecture perspective. So, Service-based architecture means that the specification focuses on the services and functionalities provided by the core network, 
rather than nodes of the network as such. So this is natural as the core network today is already often highly virtualized with the core network functionality of running on generic uh, computer hardware. Second one is network slicing is a term commonly seen in the context of uh, 5G. A network slice is a logical network serving a certain business uh, or customer need and consists of the necessary functions from the service-based architecture and is configured together with it. For example, one network slice uh, can be set up to support uh, mobile broadband applications with full mobility support, uh, similar to what provided by LTE, and another slice can be set up to support specific non-mobile latency critical industry automation application. These slices will all run on the same underlying physical core and radio networks, but from the end user application perspective, they appear as independent networks. In many aspects, it is similar to configuring multiple virtual computers on the same physical computer. Edge computing, where parts of the end user application run close to the core network edge to provide low latency, can also be part of such a network slice. And the third one, uh, control plane uh, user plane split, is emphasizing the 5G core network architecture, including independent scaling of the capability of the two. For example, if more control plane capacity is needed, it should be straightforward to add it without affecting the user, uh, user plane of the network. Okay, <clears throat> so uh, let us take a look on the high level of the 5G uh, core network architecture. So this figure uses a service-based representation where the services and the functionality, functionalities are in focus. In the specifications, there is also an alternative reference points description focusing on the point-to-point -point interaction between the functions. Uh, but this is not captured in current figure. The user plane function, uh, which is, uh, you can see, here consists of the uh, well user plane UPF itself, which is a gateway between the RAN and external networks. So RAN and external networks. These external networks can be internet or some local industrial network, for example. So its responsibilities include. Uh, packet routing and forwarding, packet inspection, quality of service handling, uh, packet filtering, and traffic measurements. It also serves as an anchor point for mobility uh, when necessary, so it's contained to SMF mobility function. The control plane, which is shown on the top here, uh, consists of several parts. So let's take a look at this session management uh, function, which is here. Handles, uh, among other functions, IP address allocation for the device, um, control or policy enforcement, and general session management function. The access and mobility management function, the AMF, is in charge of control signaling between the core network and the device, security for user data, idle state mobility, and authentication. The functionality operating between the core network, uh, more specifically the AMF and the device, is sometimes referred to as a 
non-axis stratum to separate it from the axis stratum uh, which handles functionality operating between the device and the radio axis network. In addition, the core network can also handle other type of functions, for example, policy control function or uh, PCF. PCF is responsible for policy rules the, and other uh, function unified data management, UDM, which is here is responsible for authentication, credential, and access authorization, network exposure function, NEF, uh, and also the network repository function, and also the authentication server function, handling authentication functionality, and the application function. So, these functions and many others, they are uh, not discussed uh, further because there are simply too many of them and uh, they are not, uh, they, are, they are important but they are really uh, very application specific and for the, yeah, I, I suggest you take a look for the reference or just uh, Google uh, network functions, control plane of the 5G NR. So here we exactly can see a network uh, slicing and also service-based uh, architecture in action. So we assume that we could have uh, different applications, for example, telematics, smart grid, AR, VR, CCTV surveillance, and each of those slices would have some functions that are specific for those slices uh, and hence independent from uh, other slices, but also could have some control uh, functions from the control plane which are common for them. And again, uh, uh, these slices would the benefit of, of network slicing is that it's all physically could run on a single machine uh, but appear as different networks to other people yeah. and therefore you can use you can take advantage of the current uh, computer progress.